Hi, my name is Jin and I was retired. I'm in the kitchen, but relax. I'm not going to share recipes on this channel. I'm here to cook up an analogy that might help us think about figuring out your Roth conversions. Hey, before I begin, Please like and subscribe to this channel. The more likes and subscriptions I get, the higher this will be in the search results in YouTube. Now, for our kitchen counter analogy, let's imagine a retired couple with $2 million worth of retirement savings. And that retirement savings is represented by one gallon, 128 fluid ounces of water. So that 128 fluid ounces is divided this way in their three tax buckets. The tax deferred accounts have 96 fluid ounces. In their taxable accounts, they have 19.2 fluid ounces. And over here in the Roth accounts, they have 12.8 fluid ounces. This is all one gallon of water divided into those three buckets. That's 75% here in the tax deferred accounts, 15% in taxable accounts, and 10% in tax-free or Roth accounts. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, you know that I talked about my buckets, and these buckets are my tax buckets, tax-free, tax-deferred, and taxable buckets. Those are the buckets we're talking about today. Why would somebody want to take assets from here and put them over here in your tax-free Roth accounts? Well, early in your retirement, before pension and Social Security begin, you may be at your lowest tax rates. You could be at the 10 or 12% tax bracket. And this will be the ideal time to take out assets from your tax deferred account and pay the tax at that low tax rate. When you're 72 and above, you'll have required minimum distributions. When you add the RMDs from your tax deferred accounts, plus your pension and social security, you could find yourself in the 22, 24, or even 32% tax bracket. Now in this analogy, what would that mean? Well, let's assume our couple takes out a 4% rule, $80,000 from their tax deferred account. If they do that now at a 12% tax bracket, their tax is $9,600. And in this world, that's withdrawing a 5.12 ounces, about two-thirds of a cup, from their tax-deferred account. But they got to pay taxes for it. So in this case, they're going to have to take about a tablespoon and a smidgen and throw it away. That's the taxes. That's the taxes at 12%. If they take that same cup of resources out of their tax deferred account in a 22% tax bracket, you're looking at one, two and a quarter tablespoons of taxes down the drain. If you're at the 24% tax bracket, you're looking at two and a half tablespoons of taxes down the drain. And if you wait till your 32% tax bracket kicks in, you're looking at about three and a quarter. One, two, three and a quarter. That's a lot of taxes. So if you could get money out of there earlier at the 12% tax bracket, you'll be saving a lot of money. And that's just the federal tax hit for your withdrawals from tax deferred. I'm not talking about state taxes in this example. Let's assume the couple lives in Florida or Texas, someplace without income taxes. 
that's a lot of money. So the more that you can get out at a low tax bracket, the better you'll be. But you can only push this so far. If you take too much out of your tax deferred account, you'll bump up past the 12% tax bracket. For a married couple filing jointly in 2021, the top of the 12% tax bracket is taxable income of $81,050. Now, if you consider a standard deduction of about $25,100, that means this couple could have gross income, total income before the deduction of about $106,000. So if our couple took out that $80,000 from their accounts, in this year, they would have left about $26,000 before the top of the 12% tax bracket. And that's a lot of assets there that are in jeopardy of being taxed at higher rates later in their retirement. So what if our couple decides to use that 12% tax bracket and instead of 80,000, they decide to take out 6.4 fluid ounces or $100,000 from their tax deferred accounts this year. 80,000 plus minus the taxes is what they're expecting to live on. So that leaves $20,000 that they could put in to a Roth conversion. And that equals about two and a half tablespoons that they could put back here. So one, two and a half tablespoons that they could put into the Roth to take out later tax-free in their retirement. That still leaves them that 5.12 fluid ounces to live on. And again, they got to take about a tablespoon and a quarter and put it into taxes and live off the rest. Now you still have to pay taxes on the uh, 20,000 that you put into the Roth conversion. And there are many reasons why you might want to take taxable income. They would take about $2,400 or about a third of a tablespoon and pay the taxes on that Roth conversion. So our couple has taken out $100,000, stayed in the 12% tax bracket, and they paid a total of one and a half tablespoons of taxes to withdraw that $100,000 with the withdrawal and the tax on the conversion combined. Now, a lot of people say, why not convert the whole thing? That's $1.5 million of income. You'd be taxed at a 37% tax bracket. That's $555,000 of taxes that you would owe. And in this analogy, that's four and a half cups of water down the drain. Now in my next video, I'm gonna show how this might work on my do-it-yourself retirement withdrawal strategy spreadsheet. And let me close with my standard word of caution. I am not a financial professional. I have no initials after my name, so please take this as entertaining ideas from one educated consumer to another. Always do your own due diligence and seek out a professional if you need to. Thanks. See you next time.